This is Cam Wyland, and you are listening to the 154th episode of the Wordplay Podcast. Last week was the week of the editor. My newly hired editor, Kathy Lindeek of Cyanda Editorial, sent in her analysis of Dreamlander right on schedule, which was nice since it put an end to my buildup of sick to the stomach every time I opened my inbox anticipation. With much fear and trembling, I clicked the email and big whoosh of relief. My first thought, she gave it a stamp of approval. Yay! Second thought, it made her cry. Twice. Evil sadistic laugh. Third thought, this lady knows what she's doing. She did an awesome job helping me tighten up the prose, particularly in the always hairy beginning, and I can sincerely say I recommend her services. If you're in need of a top-notch, extremely reasonably priced freelance editor, catch your go-to gal. You can find out more at her website, Cyenda, that's S-C-I-E-N-D-A dash editorial dot com. How to improve your story with specificity. The latest post in the video series on my blog offers some contrasting examples to demonstrate the power of specific language in our stories. To watch it, visit my blog at wordplay-kmwyland, that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d dot blogspot dot com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. And now, I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. Are you writing your novel too fast? How fast should a novel be written? Is there some kind of guideline to which all authors should conform? Are faster writers better than slow writers, or vice versa? As a reader, I often cringe at the notion of authors churning out a book, or more, a year. Not that some authors can't balance consistent excellence with speed, but too often quality is sacrificed for quantity. When it comes to writing, I admit I'm a tortoise. I spend roughly a year outlining and researching, a year writing the first draft, and as much as five years editing the thing. I deliberately plan three years between each of my publications, and I'm always a book ahead of myself. For example, when Dreamlander comes out this December, I will already be up to my elbows in the second or third draft of the next book, The Deepest Breath, which isn't scheduled for publication until 2015. I could churn out a book every year, I could publish a book every year, and perhaps I'd sell more books as a result. But would my writing be the better for it? In a recent post on her blog, author and editor Roz Morris posited, some novels should be written slowly. She says, not all novels can or should be written fast. Although we do aim to finish our books, not fiddle forever, I worry that we are too obsessed by speed. My writing pace isn't unusual. I recently finished reading The Lessons by Naomi Alderman and was heartened to see a four-year gap between novel one and novel two. She marinates even longer than I do. Authors under contract to publishers who demand a book or more every year may have little choice in their speed. But if you've yet to be published, now is a good time to consider the benefits of pacing yourself. In her article, Nine Writing Mistakes That Just Won't Quit, in the April 2012 issue of The Writer, Susan Breen, a teacher at Gotham Writers Workshop, shared a lesson about getting ahead of ourselves. One of the very first things I did as a writer, when I had written no more than three paragraphs of my first story, was to look through a reference book for places that might publish it. My list had more words in it than my story. And I'm embarrassed to say that the minute I finished the first draft, I sent the story out, to 20 places. Each of them rejected me with a form letter. With that in mind, consider a few reasons why slowing down can benefit every aspect of the writing process. Outline. As the formative stage of your writing, should you choose to take advantage of it, the outline shapes everything that follows. When you rush through it to get to the fun stuff, you risk building your story on a wobbly foundation. Take your time when outlining to ensure you're able to write a story that's solid from beginning to end, and to prevent excruciating edits down the line. Research. A commitment to research is what separates the professionals from the wannabes. If we're willing to spend necessary time learning about our story's factual basis, we'll be much more likely to craft a story that makes factual sense, rather than learning the facts later, or even too late, and trying to warp our already written story to fit the truth. First draft. Sometimes our stories 
just come boiling out of us. To slow them down might risk pushing us out of the zone. And if that's so, right away. But keep in mind that the more patiently and thoughtfully we approach the first draft, the less rewriting we're likely to have to do later on. Edits. This step, more than any other, is the one we like to rush through. The story's finished, and we're flying high on the wings of our accomplishments. It's wonderful, it's marvelous, it's wunderbar. Why not just send it out into the world right now while the glow's still fresh? But editing is something that must never be rushed. Take the time to let your story sit. Approach it with a fresh eye, identify the problems, and start again. Few stories can be edited to optimal quality in less time than a few years. Querying and Publishing And so we come to the end of our journey. This is a step that should never be approached lightly. Whether you're taking the traditional route and knocking on agents' doors, or taking matters into your own hands and publishing independently, you never want to rush into this decision. Once you've queried and been turned down, or published and been read, you can never take back what's been done. Your story, in all its preparedness or unpreparedness, is out there for the world to see and judge the amount of time and effort you've given it. If you're a speedy rabbit of a writer, that's great. Keep hopping. But don't let yourself get ahead of what's best for your story. Take whatever time is necessary to perfect each step of the process so you can end up with a story that is the absolute best you can make it. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay-kmyland, that's W-E-I-L-A-N-D, dot blogspot.com, and be sure to listen again next week. Mm-hmm.